fellas, blink if you haven't purchased a Father's Day gift yet. Yeah, we thought so. Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the leaders in below the waist grooming. Maybe your pops has had a bush since the 70s and that's okay. Our friends at Manscaped have crafted the total package for his special day, whether it's for the boys downstairs, his beard, or even the best pair of underwear out there. Manscaped has his bases covered. Head over to manscaped.com and get 20% off with free shipping with code SHOW20. Go from daddy to zaddy. Trust Manscaped. I can't wait to buy my dad his first proper ball shaver. I feel like it's a father-son moment we need to share it together. My sons, I hope that they're going to get me a new ball shaver. Maybe they'll get me a new beard trimmer because I've been using my beard trimmer for a little while. I could do with a little upgrade. Maybe they will get me the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, the complete beard maintenance kit for all of us bearded kings. This all-in-one kit comes with a Beard Hedger, Manscaped's most advanced beard trimmer, as well as shampoo, conditioner, oil, and balm for my beard. It also comes with a brush, comb, and scissors so we can style the beard and moustache like the true gentleman that we are. No beard kit would be complete without Manscaped's handyman face shaver for that smooth finish that we all know he loves. This bad boy is all he needs, compact enough to fit in any travel case. Make sure he takes it on his next trip. And if he carries loads of body hair like most dads do, you're in luck with the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. This bad boy is designed with fathers in mind, featuring the Lawnmower Signature Lawnmower 5.0. This Father's Day is also the perfect time for your old man to stop stealing his wife's nail clippers and finally get a kit of his own that will last him a lifetime. The Shears 3.0 is the five-piece precision men's nail grooming kit that any father needs to stay on top of his self-care routine with professional grade stainless steel tools sized and styled for the task at hand and that set of underwear he got for christmas a decade ago that needs going get it upgraded and what better way than with manscaped boxes 2.0 the boxes 2.0 were designed with a simple mission make the most comfortable boxes a man could buy it starts with a dual pouch a dedicated space that cradles your stones in place with a perforated performance fabric for extra breathability and they are a game changer get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code show 20 at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com use the code show 20 never forget where you came from if you know what I mean, stop buying men shit presents. Happy Father's Day from Manscaped. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the FM Show. I am your host Tony Jameson, joined as always by RDF Tactics Aaron Falloon. Yes. And there's three of us today because we've got a guest Aaron. And it's one we've been wanting to get on publicly. Oh, yeah. He's been on Patreon before. But everybody say hello to the wonderful Musterman FM. Musterman, how are you, pal? Are you well? <laughs> how are you guys? Yeah, I'm brilliant. Uh, thank you very much for having me on. How are you both? Grand. Grand. Brilliant. Like, we'll give a bit of a behind the curtain. We normally record on Thursdays, as everybody knows. Um, today is Bank Holiday Monday. So there's been a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> so, like, a little bit of a delay. <laughs> yeah, no, it'll be fine. Like, you know, but yeah, it's been good. We've had a nice day. Um, we, were, we were just uh, chatting before we hit record. Um, that I've actually, I was like, we have to go a little bit earlier. So normally what happens, viewers and listeners, is the record schedule is set by mine and Aaron's kids' bedtimes, okay? So, <laughs> but in the strange event that either of those children end up asleep earlier, it's then, go, 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 this is not a yeah, drill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> can can yeah. we get done earlier? And I text Muslim and say, look, any chance you can go early? Because I've also done a workout today, so there's a chance that I will just crash if I sit down for more than 12 <laughs> minutes. Um, so, yeah, so it's like, right, we're on early. Let's get it done. So I'm good. I'm very, very good. Thank you, uh, thank you for asking. Uh, Aaron, how are you, buddy? I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm, I'm a bit... 
that's that's low. <laughs> like, how are you? I'm alive. <laughs> so, like, last week I sp- uh, spoke about me doing like a little bit of scouting in real life, mm-hmm. but then like the season ended in the Premier League and stuff, and it's just like, where do we go from here, sort of thing. But then because I'm scouting and because I'm scouting in places like Slovakia and Serbia and Hungary, like mm-hmm. their leagues are still well and kicking, like still alive and stuff like that. So I'm like, ah, oh, yes, I've got football. So we've been, I say we, my son's been watching football with me as well, literally every day, whatever football we can find, whatever hidden talent we can find as well, which is going to be a little interesting later on in the show. Beautiful. I like how it all ties together. Yeah, and yeah. that's the reason that Mustaman is here. <laughs> Musterman, for those people who don't know you, do you want to sort of explain what it is you do within the FM community space? In fact, you know what? What is you do within just life in general, if you want? Give people a full rounded picture of the person uh, under the beanie hat. Yeah. Cool. Well, it all started in 1985 in a hospital in South London. No, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's not quite go back that far. When two um, people so love I, each other very much. <laughs> questionable. <laughs> two people loved when each other people, in a moment. When two people share a pizza. <laughs> After a few drinks, you know what happens, eh? <laughs> Mum, Dad, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> well, um, I'm yeah, so I'm 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 Jeff or Musman <laughs> FM. <laughs> I was born. That's something we've established. Um, there was a night of, of steamy passion and nine months later I arrived. Um, and then 35 years later, after being a, a true disappointment to both parents, I then started to become active in the football manager world. So um, some people might know me because of the Musman iconic skin. I've been making skins for the last three seasons, I think. Um, and then relatively recently uh, started venturing into YouTube. So... In two weeks will be my one-year anniversary of releasing videos and putting myself out there, um, which is quite amazing. Um, I'm surprised I lasted longer than three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It, like, we said this on the, on the Patreon episode when you were on. Your style stands out because I remember seeing your stuff when it first happened. And because you didn't have like everyone else has normally got which is the, the little camera in the bottom corner so everyone sees your face and it's yeah, all like, yeah, like yeah, here's yeah. how a, a youtube video looks like as far as we're aware yours was all like hand drawn and then like with this lovely sort of like dulcet tones that were just like sort of narrating through it and i was like mm, yeah this is brilliant this is like really fresh and then yeah. it was like and then there's data and i was like oh, okay i'm in, I'm in. <laughs> right. and it also helped you doing sam dory as well at the time i think i was gonna say I, I i lure you in with the soft the gentle the the deep voice the slow tempo and then i hit you with numbers yeah yeah right, it it's, did things to me it is that sort of content you're watching it and you know that someone's taking care of their content as well I think that's why, and it's also content. It's like you you see the view numbers. I'm sorry, but you see the view numbers, and she's like, "How is this not getting more?" Like, mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, and it's one of those things as well. But oh man, the content is brilliant. And I think I've said it to him before as well, publicly on Twitter. I was like, I see the video. I was like, "This is literally exactly how I want my videos to be." It's like when I first saw it, I was just like, "That's just mental." How someone can do that's- that. That's the thing, like, because you say there about like, oh, like, how can this video not have as as many views as as other yeah, stuff? Yeah, but, yeah. but the beautiful bit is, is watching it grow. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. organic. Like, yeah, when it people is organic, get on yeah. get on board with, it and they're like, and you're almost sort of like, because I remember saying to you, Aaron, when 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 we first started chatting, like watching your channel, like do that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I yeah, sort of yeah. felt I was like. So I saw yeah, this at the start, yeah, and like yeah, here same, we are. And yeah, I think yeah. I think it's the, and it's the same with Musterman, you know, like the people who are there at the start. And then, like, seeing more people joining, this is like, oh, everyone's getting yeah, it. This is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. cool. I mean, you've got to feel that yourself, uh, Jeff, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I, t- look, look, I mean, I'm still astonished that there's more than one <laughs> view, which is the one that I watch myself to make sure that it's got at least one. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, ultimately, I mean, I think that anyone that puts themselves out in this space has to have a certain amount of ego, but still the idea that anyone wants to watch is quite quite new to me i should probably start to get used to this um you know i'm yeah. I, res- I respond to every comment on the videos because i'm just so 
so amazed. And there, there are days where I release yeah, a yeah. video and I'm like, there's a lot of comments come through and I'm like, wow, this is, this is great. It's validating. Um, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but also now I understand why people can't do that to all their big comments on the videos. Cause one, yeah, if yeah, it blows yeah, up, yeah. like it's, it's astonishing. It's wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm, mm. I'm so, so grateful for the support I've received in this first year already. Um, it's, it's genuinely mind boggling. I mean, uh, the last video I think I uh, released on Friday, which is 20th episode in this Pauk Zaragoza series, um, and it's almost got as many views as the first video in the episode, which seems... that That's not how it's meant to work. It's meant to... You start yeah, with a bang, yeah. and then you just yeah, watch it slowly it trickle up. down. Yeah. Um, it's it's brilliant. It's been an amazing journey so far. Um, I'm very very grateful um, because, and a little bit confused. Because <laughs> the journey, though, it's like you don't feel. Sometimes you can just jump in, and you don't feel like you've missed a lot. Because I don't know. Even though you're going on a journey, each episode also stands alone. Like you're learning yes. something from each episode anyway, or you can take something away from each episode. So it doesn't feel like oh, I'm on episodes. I've got to watch all of it. All of it, like you should. Don't it? you should watch all of it back. But at the same time, you just don't feel like you're you're completely lost and out of touch with things. And I, that, I think that's the way you come across as well. To be fair, the way you explain a, things. That's a really interesting point, actually. And your stuff, without wanting to blow smoke into any orifice, <laughs> um, like I think your the style of content that you've got on YouTube is is in my head what I would love to do, but can't. Right, like, like, <laughs> I, like, I know that I could do. Like, I can do let's play, and that's like it'll take me time to do it to do it the way that I want to do it. But as Aaron says, there, like, you miss a couple of episodes, and it's like, all right, what season you're in now, or like, how many games have you missed? Yeah, Whereas yeah. with your stuff and your content, it feels like there's like a theme, a centralized theme in each episode. So yeah, something yeah, happens, yeah. and then you respond to that thing, and then there's a there's a resolution at the end. Like, yeah, yeah, it yeah. feels like there's a, a, a constructed narrative going through, and it is episodic, <laughs> rather than just this elongated narrative. And yeah, yeah. that's what I think is really different. Like, Stinger is, like, when he really dialed up the Salgerosh Let's yeah, Play, yeah. like, I sat and I went, oh, I need to look at my stuff again because that's how you do a Let's Play. <laughs> but then I was watching you also at the same time going, but I wish I knew what numbers meant because I'd like to do it like that as well. <laughs> so, so basically what happens, I just stream and go, someone else is going to edit. No, they're not. Right, fine, we'll move on. <laughs> the thing is, Salgaro Shave is still possibly one of my favourite series of this, this cycle. It's just, mm. it's such a wonderful piece all put together such a quick turnaround you've got the pace there you've got you've got those exploration of ideas as well and i think yeah, i think yeah. it's 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 basically blogging with video mm -hmm. but yeah, not yeah. blogging because that would be weird <laughs> <laughs> i think where we are with with the the salgeros save with your content um, and I think with Trek, uh, Trequino, as he's called now, or Trek FM, as he used to be called when I first <laughs> knew him, with his blueprint content and the cult of as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What I'm seeing is longer form content, which works for me because I can't, <laughs> I can't condense what I do into like a couple of minutes. Like everyone who sort of like can do that oh, you're all brilliant, you're all geniuses, and you can work the algorithm. Whereas I'm like, right, you need to know about this before we get started. And the reason that these players are backup players in their squads, they're not going to be as useful as these. There, there might be, be a point during the story when, you know, nine seasons down the line, a third, a third reserve does actually play and <laughs> injures himself. And that might be imperative to the story arc somewhere. But... I just I, I feel too much. <laughs> but watching watching what you guys do, it's great because you're going. Here's long form, but every bit of long form seems to have a purpose. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I'm comfortable with just doing sticking with tactics. Like my tactics can be long form, but I can't do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my less plays. I just get. It's, you know, I have a plan. I have an idea. And in the moment I start recording that, like, I'm just in a, I'm just in a world of my own. I start, I literally ramble and ramble. And then when it comes to the editing bit, and it's like, okay, I don't want to cut this bit out because I feel this bit's important. 
don't want to cut that bit out, not that bit. And then it's like, oh, but it's 40 minutes. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, oh, we've got, yeah. So this was the problem. I, I tried doing that that whole thing and I'd ramble. But the problem is, is the bits where the footage were useful. I'd be rambling about yes. the same thing. So I'd end up really? like having an episode that me just repeating the same sentence three times and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose then let, let's look at it then, right? So you, you've touched upon it there. So so you, your Pauk slash Zaragoza um, in your in your save. So if people haven't seen it, let's have a quick little roundup as to what has gone on in that series and where are you at the minute in your save. So let's give you some sort of like some air time for this then for, for people to go and check stuff out. Yeah, sure. So I'm, I'm um, as you may have uh, gathered from this conversation so far, I'm a slow player. <laughs> You know, I like to take my time. I like to go into a lot of detail. So we started off in, in at Pauk. Um, I wanted to start at a reasonably big team, but make Europe the challenge. Um, we absolutely coasted the league the first season. And we coasted the league the second season, <laughs> um, which is brilliant. It's absolutely fantastic. It's That's what we want is we want to make the league easy so we can focus all our effort and energy into Europe. And oh, the yeah. first season, we got to the semi-finals of the Conference League. We were... 2-1 down to my my beloved Aston Villa. And in the 98th <laughs> minute of 96 minute stoppage time, young Greek striker Stefanis Gimas scored from 25 yards. Absolute, oh. not even a worldie, not even a worldie. It was a it was an Emmy Martinez Emma error. And we, we brought it into extra time. <laughs> Two minutes into extra time, Villa scored. And then in the 121st minute... Another one of our youngsters came on to equalise oh right at the oh. death. And then we missed four four of our five penalties. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> FM does that, doesn't it? It leads you, it gets you these little bits. Like going, hey, you know what? You're getting with a chance here, uh, and the chance you've got is zero chance. Yeah, it's it's like when I go old Trafford with a little with a little team and you're like I'm too like two one down at half time. You're thinking, yeah, we're in this, we're in this. Full time seven two <laughs> to me. Like, you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, 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 tra- Mar- I hate Marcus Rashford because of FM. <laughs> I, I have over the last over the last what ten years worth of games, I have not been able to deal with him whatsoever. We'll go to Old Trafford. <laughs> we'll be one nil up after five minutes, and then Marcus Rashford or something going, oh, hi, I'm here. And and that's it. That's yeah. your game over. It's four one. It's five one. It's eight one. <laughs> yeah, Callum Wilson is that person for me as well. Yeah, From Bournemouth we to a... Newcastle, yeah, that guy. Oh, I hate him. <laughs> we we had our first Champions League season with with Larissa um, this year, and we got some really easy fixtures, including Real Madrid away, um, which you know was going to be one of those matches that would decide whether or not we would continue into like, the sort of the playoff path. Um, and we had to hope for results to go our way in other matches. We went a goal down against Real Madrid, thinking, right, fair enough. Then we equalised, having saved a penalty. I'm like, we might do this. <laughs> then we then they go 2-1 up, and it's like, all right, fair enough, we're going to have to do this the hard way. Then our right back, uh, Kung Fu kicks someone in the neck and <laughs> is given a straight red card, and then we lose 6-1 because... Every time Real Madrid shoot, it hits off one of our players and deflects in four own goal, four deflections and an own goal was was what happened. I was like, I know we expected to go to the Bernabeu and lose, but not like that. Come yeah. on! And it didn't matter what we did; it was just like it was just comedy, a, a comedy of errors. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I I swear down your your Luisa save has got to be like one of the most exciting ones out there. Every time I'm not very good at, at keeping up with Twitch, but every time I log in, there's like four goals being scored in 20 minutes. <laughs> I, 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 I have this perception that every one of your games actually finishes four all. <laughs> you know what? You're not a million miles away, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah, you, say, <laughs> you say about about exciting and engaging. So this is. So we'll we'll come we'll come back to yours in in a second only because only because you've teed it up nicely for where we are um, and I spoke to Aaron about this just before we we, uh, we hit record. So last night at time of recording we had to finish season thirteen. Okay, now as as you'll know, Jeff, in Greece there's the championship group, which is you can do really well all season, finish in the top six, then the championship group where all you do is get battered off the top five teams <laughs> for the end of the season. 
And if you're in the Champions League or if you're any other European Cup or like the Greek Cup, it's just draining on the players. Like that rotation just kills you at the end of the season. So we ended up in the playoff um, groups for the Champions League. We uh, got drawn against Marseille, which we thought was pretty decent. We got a one, we got one, two, one actually in the first leg against Marseille. Then we lost three nil in the second leg. So I was like, all right, fair enough. We're out. But I thought, <laughs> fine, this means we can just come, we can focus on the league. We were two points behind second place Panathinaikos, and we were down in fifth. So there was like oh, second, dude. third, fourth, fifth, all separated by two points. Olympiacos had won the league in match day four as they tend to do, because they started with a 20-point lead over everybody. Um, we got into the uh, into the, the the championship group, and Aaron, I told you I've been working on this, this counter-attacking system that I've got, yeah, yeah. Right? this Brazilian box. Well, when things don't quite work out with the Brazilian box, I like to move my enganche up into a DLF position, and I have something that's quite similar to the, the, the setup you had, which was yeah, yeah. four at the back, two midfielders, a one and one, then a and three. three. Yeah? yeah. And I thought, you know what? What I've learned from this Larissa save is I need to be aggressive when it gets into that playoff group because I can be a bit city off. And, and I think I've always been punished against these bigger teams later on in the league where I'm sitting back a little bit, soaking up the pressure. And I was like, you know what? Let's just go for it. Okay. So I went to that system. Moved into the four two one three, and the first match we played was Olympiacos, and we beat them one nil. Mm-hmm. And then we played AEK, and we beat them four one. Okay. And then we played Panathinaikos, oh. and we beat them. Oh, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> and from these ten matches, I won eight. I drew one and I lost one to AK. I finished second on the final game of the season to secure Champions League football for the second time by beating Olympiacos for the second (laughs) time in the championship group when AK drew with Asteras nil-nil. And by the time, I don't know what had happened to Olympiacos in the championship group. They'd gone from losing one match They'd lost six by the end of the championship group. Gee. So we actually ended up four points behind the, the champions. And there was a point where we were like, we're actually in a title race now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So wild, so wild. So we finished the season in the Champions League. Super Job scored after like 30 seconds against um, against uh, Olympiacos to set us up and then we got a second goal so that was fantastic but we just had these matches where like the team just would not quit <laughs> we were 2-0 down against Asteras we won 4-2 with two goals in the 90th minute um there's been moments where I've almost been doing laps of the office like with the goals <laughs> going in from all kinds of angles and I'm like I can't believe we've done this we've we've pulled things back and Oh, I'm just, I am loving, I'm loving this save. Even if we don't win anything, I'm <laughs> loving the fact that we're here. And and up next is the Euros with, with Greece. And it's just, oh, I'm oh, having yeah. so much fun. Oh, yes. I forgot you're the manager of Greece. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Yeah, Ooh. it's uh, it's very very exciting. I need to I need to, to bring myself back down. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, just hype myself up there as well. <laughs> Isn't that the problem though with with playing at night as well? Is you're 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 getting so hyped, and then when you finish, and you're like, I've got to do something for yeah, the next three hours, me. but I've also got to yeah, sleep. That happens to me. Yeah, that happens yeah, to me every time I come off streaming. It's just like because obviously I've, I've got the lamp in my face and everything as well. So I'm just like, mm-hmm. I don't really realize until I go downstairs. I'm like, I'm awake, and I'm just thinking about <laughs> I'm gonna have to do something. I'm just like I'm looking for things on YouTube. But yeah, football manager saves. I haven't been playing. I haven't been playing much. I have been playing, but I've been doing scouting as well. But like I said earlier, I've been scouting some out there nations and I've been really into Bulgarian football for some, I don't know why Bulgarian football Mm -hmm. just grips me. Not the last couple of games because they've got that championship group as well. Ludogrets won the league and it was just like, now everyone's just like, why are we playing? I think even Ludogrets rotated like literally the whole team in their last Mm -hmm. game as well. But they're ridiculously strong in that league. But um yeah, so in football manager, <clears throat> sorry, um I just went into the Bulgarian league and then just picked Boltev 
Plovdiv. And I'm trying mm-hmm. to do what I'm kind of doing in real life, just scouting and looking out for these players. But when doing scouting, I've I've come to realize my favorite bit is actually finding about finding out about the player. Because sometimes you just run into some crazy stories, crazy stories about the player. So uh, last week there was a Nigerian in oh playing for Cluj, so that's Romania, mm-hmm. Philip Otele, and yeah, he was he came over to England. He had like scouts at Sunderland. And he was going to join Sunderland, I think. And then he couldn't get the visa work permit. But then he attended Teesside University, yeah, for about three, four years, playing semi-pro. And then now all of a sudden he's playing European football, like literally in the European competitions and stuff. And it's just like, yeah, his story is just a bit... Not, it's not crazy, but it's also about... It's got that little Ian Wright feel where he was literally mm. playing, not Sunday league, but he was playing semi-pro. He was just playing football. And the next minute he's literally on the big-ish stage, hopefully he gets a transfer. But that's what I'm being kind of doing in full manager. So I, like, I find a player and then I go into Google and I'm just like typing in something. I'm just, so what I do is literally type an interview. But if he's Romanian, I used to have, I have to use Google Translate and then I have to mm-hmm. search it in their language. So that, that's where you kind of get the information. You get their journalist reports and stuff. Yeah, and it's like translating the whole thing. It's funny that when they translate some of the team names because like the pig. That's, that's clearly not the team's name. <laughs> <laughs> what's um what's interesting about you being doing all the, the scouting with with Bulgaria and Romania yeah. is we're all, we've already started discussing next yes, year's yes. save right and build a nation Romania has come up in the conversation because Georgie Hadji, Romanian legend yeah, 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 Georgie yeah. Hadji, is a director and manager of a club in the second well, division. And as is Angika Papescu is the chairman, and Rivaldo is on the board. <laughs> well, that's not, yeah. So even him, even about his, uh, he's got an academy in uh, mm-hmm. Romania as well. So I, I had to learn all about that because there was a player that graduated from there. He's now in the Romanian team as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah, even like researching him, and then you're like you just fall into these other things. You like started researching about the academy because now you're trying to find out. What because obviously certain academies educate people on certain things. Oh yeah, Baltic Plovdiv, they educate their players on Bitcoin, and they just won a cup the other day, and they pay their players in Bitcoin. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> that's, that's, they are not that's educating the their players on Bitcoin yes, and then yes. paying them in imaginary currency. Yes, <laughs> yes. Hey, what you need to do, everyone, yes. is make sure that no one scams you with this imaginary currency. Hey, who wants some imaginary currency? You can, you can also go to the stadium and use their. You can like buy things in their stadium with Bitcoin currency as well. It's, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm even, hoping the next. Sorry, I, I, I was just going to say I hope that the next step is that they invent their own currency and just end up paying people in air. <laughs> plov dollars. That's a plov dollars. <laughs> I, I want an FM25. I want to be able to pay my transfer fee in normal money or make believe. <laughs> but it's just that is because they're like a very old club as well. So that's like mm. their oldest. Well, I can't remember what their thing is, but it's like yeah, the oldest club, but the first one in in Bitcoin, the first Bitcoin club. So that's what's been yeah. yeah. That's what's been going on. I can't translate that into football manager. That that part's impossible. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I've been doing. Like if I find someone in football manager, obviously in football manager, you don't really have a story there. So you, I just search the player on Google and then I'm like, oh, I can't find a story. Oh, I'll look for someone else. <laughs> Aaron's uh, undertaking a journalism it? degree, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, it comes to that though, like on Twitter. So I was like, even that, if you want to go into it a little bit, even that like on Twitter, LinkedIn as well you do start connecting with these journalists. And then like, I had a journalist the other day, even someone from an agency, and just like, just finding out any little bit of information because, so like, what obviously like, every, a lot of people want to be, there's up and coming scouts, everyone wants to be up and coming scouts, but I've, obviously I found that on Twitter, it's fairly easy to spot a good player, right? And you can sort of know who the best wonder kids are and the best youth players. You can like just scout Brazil and you already know by buzz who, Esteval and who Endrick are and so you don't really have nowhere to go like you can write about them but you're kind of telling people what people already know he's a good dribbler and his life story you already know that he's got like probably TV shows and stuff in Brazil already but obviously someone in Bulgaria who's originated from Nigeria and stuff like that is very difficult but that's where your work can stand out on online mm. 
especially when you're doing your due diligence and you're taking that part seriously. So yeah, I've had like talking to the Bulgarian journalists trying to find out any sort of transfer information contract because sometimes on uh, transfer market you can't find out when the contract expires. So mm-hmm. you're gonna have to find out some way. <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. some way. And if there's a, if there's a little bit of information that you need, I'm just gonna I'm gonna look for it. I had to watch a whole interview in Romanian just because he was a player was talking. I just wanted to find out what he was talking about because you can't get that I'm information genuinely anywhere looking else. looking forward to your progress over the next few weeks as you start like dropping Bulgarian words into conversation and by, <laughs> by, by like November you're just speaking fluent Romanian no my son my son does it so like he's watching German football but it was in English but he just gets the goalkeeper her, her, what's his her dead key or something like that and he's just repeating and dead geese is quite like in the same accent <laughs> like he was just finding it Emmanuel and he's just but he pronounced it back in the exact same way and I'm just like that, stop that you can't do that outside <laughs> yeah i think kids 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 pick up american accents through tv whereas of course now aaron's going to be f- fluent in romanian and bulgarian which is going to be fantastic so uh, hello to all of our romanian and bulgarian viewers uh, very very happy to have you in and i'm not going to attempt to butcher your language because um, i can you know what i mean i do that a lot on stream um jeff i mean that sort of seems like it ties into to to why you're here, really, with what with what Aaron's doing with regards to how he's doing doing real life scouting and trying to acquire players. Um, your way, your way is the way that you know that I I like the idea of, of trying to work it out in game. We need to talk about it. We need to talk about it, and we need to talk about data. And I'm going to give it the very very simple introduction. I'm going to call it Moneyball. Just for my little simplistic head to understand. But what that means is we'll look at Moneyball, we'll look at data with an FM, we'll look at how you scout and how you find players. And this may or may not be because it's transfer window time in my save and I need a little bit of help. Okay, so <laughs> this I like I'm I'm fine to do some like FM consultancy. If every transfer window you want to give me a call, you know, let's 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 put me in game. Actually as a <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, let's do that. Because <laughs> because my my transfer window streams are now two streams long, so yeah, I think get more people involved. It would be a great. Because <laughs> I, I remember I remember texting you about this, going like when we when we did the Patreon episode. And again, if you've not seen it and you and you can afford a sign up to Patreon, go and have a look at it. And we we chat about this sort of entry level um, into into to data management and data sort of scouting and stuff. And again, this episode will do the high level stuff. And we'll also do a bit more in depth as well, so everyone gets a bit of everything. But I remember texting you straight after um, after the first time I did. It. I was like, "I did data. I did data." <laughs> and that's literally what it says. I did data, and I'm like, "I don't think I did data." <laughs> that's that was one of my questions for later in the episode for you. Was in hindsight, <laughs> do you feel data helped or made it worse? <laughs> so what's interesting is. So here's a real life example of, of how I did data. Um, I looked for a, I was trying to work out how good my players were in one season, who was dropping off a little bit. So from what I understand, and feel free either of you to jump in and go, Tony, you've got this wrong. Okay. To compare how players do over a period of time, you obviously need to have historical data. Yeah. Yeah. I'm quite fortunate in that every single season of my save, I've saved the end of season file. So I've got 13 years worth of data to play around with. So, for example, I know how good Job Bellingham has been for seven years in a row at Larissa because I can go back and and compare how he's been every single season. So we'll use Job as an example. And I was like, do we replace him? We shouldn't because, you know, for the narrative purposes, you can't. (laughs) And it looked like his stats weren't as impressive the season we were looking at him compared to the season before. He wasn't really contributing with goals, despite the fact that on stream it appeared as though he was scoring all the time, <laughs> or at least contributing. He didn't score any that season. Uh, he did three Gee. assists, I think. And I was like, he's not creating. He's not bursting through and arriving late in the box and, and these high-level intensity sprints and stuff. And I was like, what's going on here? And it took me just a couple of seconds to go, He's in a different role this year. He's more <laughs> defensive. Okay, so so that was where I was like, right, okay, so I'm no longer looking for 
creative attacking job. I'm looking for deeper in the pitch, driving forward. He's now a regista job. So, you know, wait until he becomes libero job or goalkeeper <laughs> job. Like it's he's got all these new ways of looking at him. Um so so in that sense, I, I didn't go straight for a like for like replacement for job, but I did buy a centre back based entirely off statistical data. And he's a worldie. He's an absolute worldie. Like he was on our shortlist anyway, someone we liked. But when I saw the numbers, I was like, let's, let's try it. <laughs> I was half expecting to go, and he's shit. Yeah. <laughs> I regret everything. Three players I spent have gone. two <laughs> episodes on this, and he's shit. <laughs> Stop, let's not even talk about that. Yeah. That's, I've had experience of that as well. So we've mm. done, obviously, I'm, when you do the no, no attributes, and it's like, there's time to reveal the players we signed. And they're like, oh, no wonder why he was bad, because he is. Yeah. <laughs> that said though so that's that's genuinely the reason i love it so i did um an ix save in fm 23 and um we we start and we have no data but we needed to sign players so with just one like one month's worth of data available we signed Mies hilgers from fc 20 and he was our best center back he was better than alvarez he was better than bassi although that's not necessarily that difficult. He was better than um oh who else did we sign? We signed some guy with a with really wonky eyes. I can't remember his name. Um but Mies Hilgers was by far and away our best defender. And I revealed his attributes at the end and like he's got ten for tackling, eleven for marking. Yeah. And you're yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah. shite, but he was amazing. Yeah. And that's that's I'm, kind of like where the validation comes. Yeah. Mm. I'm surprised you get that with defenders though, because I'm also getting that with attackers. Like wingers, mm-hmm. strikers outscoring them, like outperforming, and it's like, oh yeah. Sometimes it might have that one attribute, like strength or something that you can see. You can see that play out on the match engine, but yeah, defenders. That's a bit because obviously with data as well, you might be able to get in how how you find uh, defenders yourself in your in your mm-hmm. game. But sometimes it could be just looking at data itself can be a bit touch and go with defenders or central yeah. defenders. Yeah, I think um, I think you're saying there like with these these sort of like these average attributes my argument is that job job works really well because he's got his attributes are just 12s and 11s yeah and yeah yeah 13s yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. so he's he's decent enough at everything so he should theoretically be able to fit most places he's not going to be a superstar but he's not going to let you down he's going <laughs> to be dependable <laughs> i i like to believe that all the players within fm are aware of each other so the opposition go, oh, look, it's only Job. He's full of 12s. I don't need to put effort into tackling him. <laughs> and he's like, like even his own peers are disrespecting him on the pitch, and that's why he's outperforming them. Oh, I like that. I like that angle of the story. Like, Job's out for revenge. He's like, I'm going to, I'm going to, like, in fact, you know what? This is maybe what it is, because I've got Job, and I've got Ethan Mbappe, and I've got a, a, a defensive a, a wing back called Vinicius. So whenever new people come in, they're like, "You've got Mbappe and Bellingham." I'm like, well, "The better ones, yeah." <laughs> Ethan and Job <laughs> and Vinicius as a wing back. So, <laughs> could, could you construct a team of brothers? We could get the other Pogba. John mm-hmm. McGinn's got a brother who plays for not anymore, but thirteen years in, he's going to be like forty. But that's beside the point. Mm. Um, <laughs> Just a whole team of players that aren't quite who you think they are. I forgot to tell you as well, <laughs> Virgil van Dijk's my assistant manager. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. A Rolls, a Rolls Royce of our assistant. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent here. Let, let's come back. Let's come back. Let's come back to the thing that we need to talk about. So let's talk about, about Moneyball. We'll talk about data. We'll talk about how you all use it compared to how I use it and and the wider populace. Um, so how do you want to do it? Do you want to, should we define what we mean by Moneyball, first of all, Jeff? I was going to say, that, that, that'd be a good, a good place to start. And um, so I certainly do apologize to any Americans that might be listening. But Moneyball yes. essentially yes. refers to a book from the early 2000s by Michael Lewis, uh, which focused on a baseball team called the Oakland Athletics. Now, the Oakland Athletics are a small baseball team in the big leagues. They don't have much of a wage budget. They're not particularly good. Even if you fast forward now to like the last couple of years, they're even worse. 
So hindsight, <laughs> maybe it didn't work out, but that's beside the point. Um, to, to be able to compete with the bigger teams and to afford what they're doing, they hired a guy called Billy Bean, played by Blad, Blad Pitt. Blad. <laughs> Brad Pitt, even, in the movies. For um, copyright purposes, who... Blad Pitt is the... <laughs> <laughs> Bland Pitt. Bland Pitt is what I'm going to call him from now on. <laughs> That's in, it, Brad. In, uh, you're just in... too famous. How will you cope with an absolute nobody insulting you? Um, yeah. In, in, so... in PES, he's called Bland Pitt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry. But Billy Bean essentially um, looked at statistics that weren't normally used by baseball scouts to find players that were better than what people might think they are. And in particular, so baseball is very similar to football. You Football, you have goals and you have assists, and they're the things that people look for. I want a striker, I want a person who scores a load of goals. In baseball, you've got a batter, and if they score a lot of runs, they must be good. At least mm. that's the... The perceived thinking. Whereas what Billy Bean and the Oakland Athletics did was they focused on something called on base percentage, which was the percentage of times that a player would end up going from the mound thing where they swing their bat to a base. It didn't matter whether they hit the ball or whether they walked there because it was three foul balls or whatever the rules are. This is why I apologize to Americans. I don't know enough about baseball. Um, all that mattered to them was that for whatever reason, that player got to the next base. And by doing this, they were able to find players who were able to perform but didn't have the headlines and so were a lot cheaper. And over the course of a couple of years, they built up the team to get to... They went on this like amazing 30-game win streak or something crazy. They got to the playoffs, which for a team of their size is an astonishing achievement, and then they won nothing. Mm. Which... <laughs> I think one of the key things when we talk about Moneyball is we've got to acknowledge there are limitations historically. Yeah. So all that Moneyball tends to refer to is the idea of using statistics to find players who are cheaper than what they perhaps should be. And generally mm -hmm. speaking, it's statistics a little bit away from the, the known. So, for example, we, we see the introduction of XG in, in football over the last 10 years or so, and that starts to give more of an indication of the types of chances that players are getting and how much they should score so that you can measure it against their goals to see whether they're a good finisher or a bad finisher or whether they're, they're not scoring goals because they're not getting the supply or whether they're Ronnie Rosenthal and they're missing open goals from, from 10 yards out. Um, mm -hmm. And the application that I tend to talk about when I talk about Moneyball is looking at those statistics a little bit more removed to try and find cool players to sign. Um, and that's where you get, like I mentioned earlier, your Mies Hilgers, the players that look a bit shit, but actually for whatever <laughs> reason. And it, I think there can be an element, I do apologise for veering off, of we have our own internal biases about what makes a player good through attributes. I imagine that if uh, if I ask both of you what attributes are important for defenders, what would you say? Well, I'm, yeah, I was, uh, we're going to have different ones anyway. I know mm -hmm. I would anyway, because obviously how I perceive football, but mm -hmm. I think concentration might be a universal one, possibly. Mm -hmm. And then there's positioning as well. You see, some people, some people like say strength. I don't think, like for me personally, I think you're going to have to have some... So let's say you're in the Premier League. This is where, like, it matters, obviously, where your league is and where the average, but I'm not quite happy with my centre-back having 13 strength in the Premier League sort of thing. And even tackling as well, I'm fine. Whereas marking, I think... I'll go with marking, concentrate, almost as focus, concentration, positioning, and anticipation. Agility I'm, as well. I am solo league. I am solo league. <laughs> I want... I want jumping reach. <laughs> <laughs> I want acceleration. I want anticipation. And I want leadership. That's all I want. <laughs> composure as well. Composure as well. Almost on on that. Leadership or teamwork. I want I want just someone who is gonna stick their head in where others won't. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> However, if you then go and click on a player player's position or role in football manager. <laughs> the one attribute that is every single time for a defender marked as essential is tackling. 
Yeah. A defender yeah. in a in a good team, a defender might attempt two tackles a game. Yes. They're going to yeah. be attempting See, this, yes. 10 or 15 headers a game. Being able to win headers or being in the right position to make interceptions is going to be much more valuable. Yes. Sorry, Aaron, you were, you were saying. No, no, I was just saying that's exactly what I was, yeah, that's sort of the road I was getting at. That's why like, I think for me, like tackling wouldn't be important. It will depend on obviously who you are, the type of football that you're looking to play. But for me, like marking, I think will be a lot more universal. Every defender needs to be able to mark their attacker no matter what. But when it comes to tackling, I mean, you could say like if you do have a Van Dyke at your disposal as well, maybe your partner, you again, you might not be looking at tackling as the key. You might even be looking for something that Van Dyke might be lacking, sort of thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna sound the Franco Baresi alarm, right? <laughs> Which the quote is if if I've made a tackle, I've already made a mistake. So <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The tackle is the last is the last form of defense. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. For me, I was raised on Italian defending of positioning, positioning and being in the right space. And then I take a lot from I take a lot from basketball. I take a lot from from American football. I take a lot from from uh, ice hockey of shielding, of blocking, of just you know moving players out of position. I'm, I'm not fussed about. Also, what I mean is, I used to be a winger when I was younger, and I hated people tackling me. Like just. <laughs> It's time to say hello to the newest sponsor of the FM show. Everybody, say hello to Full Time Prints. Full Time Prints offer a variety of prints to give football fans the chance to remember their favourite football moments forever. They currently offer a range of goals, team sheets, commentary and league tables. Prints are available in A4 through to A1 and can be bought with or without a frame. It makes the perfect gift for occasions such as Christmas, Birthdays, Father's Day, Mother's Day, just because presents. Like, seriously, this is the perfect gift for every football fan. You want to go on the website, browse what they've got. They've got so many things to choose from, whether it's teams, European teams, international teams, moments that happen. And if you can't find something you like, you can even do a custom request. You can create anything you've seen yourself. Maybe you've seen a goal you want to relive. You can have that. Maybe you want to relive the first match you ever attended. Or maybe if you're a football manager fan, you might want to do a custom one just designed for football manager that immortalizes your save forever. You can have a print done that has all your trophies, the entirety of the save, the key moments. Maybe you want to relive the Champions League final and have your team sheet and everything on there. You can do that with full-time prints. I'm thinking I'll get myself one and I'm going to put it right behind my head in my office just behind here. And as a little sweetener for you, we've got a little bit of discount to help you out here. So use the code THEFMSHOW. We'll get you 10% off your entire order. Go to fulltimeprints.com. Use the discount code THEFMSHOW. That's 10% off your entire order. And there's free shipping on orders over 50 quid. So go get yourself a full-time print. Immortalize that football manager save. Let us know what you've got. Visit fulltimeprints.com. Use the discount code the FM show, get yourself 10% off, and remember, free shipping on orders over 50 quid. <laughs> I, I loved it. Uh, I, I should probably admit my biases as well. I I used to play a lot of fullback but couldn't tackle. So I'm mm. I'm trying to convince the world that tackling was never important to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> it looks cool. It looks cool, but <laughs> Most people can't do it properly, so don't bother. <laughs> Leave it to the <laughs> midfielders. <laughs> Look, I, I, I contend that a perfectly timed foul is far more important. <laughs> game management, isn't it? You know, it's all game states. So, um, okay, so if we take tackling off the table then, right, how would you then go looking for a centre-back? And I know it's going to depend on the sorts of teams you are and the sorts of styles of players you want, which I guess is where the data now allows you to look for a specific style of player. Like if you want a ball playing defender, or if you want somebody who's going to bring the ball out of defense, we can now find that sort of information within game. And I know that there are some attributes and stats that don't quite tally up. And we'll discuss that as we go through. Um, so there will be some, some pitfalls to look out for. Cause let's, you know, let's be honest, there is some holes in this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're not going to shy away from that, but if you were to try and, and understand it, then let's at least, work out what we're looking for and then we can see if it's right or wrong yeah, yeah absolutely 
I think um, I, I might lean on Alan quite heavily here because he is the tactics maestro. But a lot of it comes down to understanding what it is that you expect a player to do in possession, out of possession, in transition. Yeah. Because what yeah. you're looking for is going to be di- different for each... Like, sure, if you're, you're Man City or you're Real Madrid, you might just go, give me the best guy and we'll make it work because we're going to dominate teams regardless. Uh, but when you're looking yeah, yeah. for those marginal gains, it's about understanding... Um, those kind of nuances. So if I go to my save here, actually, probably Let's quite... pull your screen up there. There we go. Look at that. Oh, look at that beautiful and there's, a, and there's a little link to this skin Ooh. in the description if, you're, uh, if you want to have Made a Made by so. RDF. <laughs> <laughs> RDF skins? Is that a new thing? Is it? <laughs> Definitely not. Oh, I no, do th- I, I'm pretty certain you both appear on the starts page. I won't, I won't go check it. I won't quit out of the game just to go to the start <laughs> page. But yeah. There is a thank you. Even bit if there, you so don't, we, do, we do appreciate that. Yeah. Even if you don't like the skin, download it anyway just to get some recommendations of some awesome people in the community. You don't have to go past the start screen, it'll link you straight to them. Ooh. Then, then once you've made that effort of downloading it, you might as well just give it a try. And you can't really <laughs> give it a try until you've exactly. done, used it for like a month or two. So, um, <laughs> sorry, I digress. Um, talking about player profile. So I'm going to look. This is the tactic I'm currently using in my Zaragotha save. Um, and we're, we're very, I wouldn't call us possession heavy, but we want to be comfortable on the ball. We want to move the ball quickly. We want to make sure that we're being quite expansive when we when we have it. We want to defend with a back three in our rest defence shape. So I've got players in the wide positions who will find themselves covering in transition against fast wingers. But generally, once once the opposition have established and that we're we're in our out of possession shape, they're going to be in the box. So they're going to be expecting crosses coming in. They're going to be trying to make those last ditch clearances. So the way to look at it is what. What exactly do I expect at each phase? In this cover position here, I've got Alejandro Francis. I want a player who can bring the ball out from defence. So I want someone who, who's who got reasonable amount of carries for a defender. I want someone who doesn't lose the ball. So I want someone with low possession lost. I want someone who then in transition will cover wide. So I want a player who can win those tackles. So I want someone who wins a high proportion of tackles not necessarily a high volume of tackles. And then defending uh, corners and crosses, I want them to win a high proportion of headers. So those will be the areas that I would focus on for a defender in this very specific role here. Whereas with Luis on the left, sometimes he's going to be a libero because I can't stick to one tactic for more than like two games. Um <laughs> Different, different things against different opposition rather, rather than just being uh, poor in terms of consistency. And so if he steps up as a libero, I also want someone who can make progressive passes. I want someone who isn't necessarily going to be as involved in defending in transition. So tackling is actually less important, but because we engage in a counter press, the number of pressures attempted are important. Mm-hmm. So we end up with very different profiles in a relatively vanilla back line. So with this, the skin, um, and it's not just on, on Musman skin, I created these pizza charts um, back in FM23, and you can also find them now in skins like Electric Panther by Groot, which is fantastic, um, and in uh, WTCS. Um, in his update most recently, he's, he's um, brought these in there as well. Um, and this allows us to see how players perform in certain metrics, compared to players in the top 20 leagues. And it's a really, really simple concept. The bigger the pizza slice, the better they are at that thing. So we can see with Luis here, he's pretty good at progressive passes. He's really good at completing passes. 90 passes per game is insane. He doesn't lose possession often, only 4.38 times per game. He wins back possession about 9.71 times. So these things we can see are good. Um, We can actually drill down a little further by position as well. So we can see that he's also actually, compared to other centre-backs, quite good at carrying the ball. Granted, 
a third of a dribble per game is not the kind of thing you're going to write home about. Um, but for a centre back, that's that's quite a lot in FM. Yeah, it is, yeah. That's the other element to, to point out is this is obviously all based on the FM game engine and how things play out. These stats are not necessarily going to be a direct parallel to what you see in real life. Mm. So I, I imagine, I, I, I don't know enough about real life things because we don't know how they're recorded either. So a yeah, progressive yeah. carry, a progressive carry according to stats bomb or the athletic will be wildly different from a successful dribble in FM. Um, and that's before we, we get into things like progressive passes. What distance is a progressive pass? What direction exactly is a progressive pass? Um, the less questions you ask, the easier it is to be at <laughs> yeah, yeah. I learned that. Was, yeah. <laughs> but for me, it was depressed in the PPDA. It was, that's why I was like, wait, the numbers are so close. So wait, how are they? I, that's what I was like, oh, okay, now my head. And then you start questioning all the other things. Like, wait, what is the dribble? Is it past the opponent or is it a certain length? Or, yeah, but yeah, that's that's a headache. <laughs> yeah, you're, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I mean, that that thread was, was huge for me. Yeah. In, in this save, I play in a low block. And yet I was having yeah. games where there was PP, OPPDAA of like three passes. I'm like, but we're not engaging yeah. them. How how how, how and that doesn't make any sense. Am I play, I'm let's, watching the I'm watching the games. This, sorry. Let's just dial this back just just two seconds or like let's again if we break the out the acronyms down as well, like just for anyone who's sort of already oh, yeah, going like, okay, yeah. cool, I'm a little bit lost at this point. Let's break the acronyms down. What do we mean by this? The so OPPA yeah, sure. will OPPDA will be mm. opposition passes per defensive action. So it's basically right. In real life, we would use it to uh, measure a high press, basically. So mm -hmm. you can you can imagine Liverpool aren't allowing a high number of opposition passes before Liverpool make a defensive action yeah. compared to a... I almost said Burnley there, but that's not true these days, is it? Mm -hmm. But, ah, oh, damn, I can't pick... Modern football these days, you can't just say Stoke or anything. Everyone's changing. <laughs> I'm trying to think of my low blocks. <laughs> Everton, yes, yes, there we are. Thank you, yes. So you can't imagine like Everton's numbers being close to Liverpool's because Everton will be sat back more. So they're going to be allowing more opposition passes before Everton make a defensive action. So you sort of use it to measure a high press. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And, and and then so, so tracking that in game again, it's it's only so in football manager what it's, happens it's in game quite literally the opposite. Right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, you sort of measure that. <laughs> so in real life, it measures the defensive okay. actions in a in the first 60% of the field. So you imagine from your op opposition's uh, box and then yeah. down 60% of the field then. So you're not measuring your defensive actions at all in your own half. But yeah, in Football Manager, it's literally opposite. So as you can see here on the screen, yeah, there we are. Look at that. Okay. Beautiful. Again. Oh. Oh. So let's say my box will be on the left and then Liverpool's box will be on the right. You can see all these little white dots tackles as well. So mm -hmm. Andor is that Andorra? Oh, the, Andorra, the club yeah. Andorra. I think Andorra yeah, versus yeah. Ramsar. Good for what's happened there. <laughs> so these these little uh, defensive actions here wouldn't wouldn't count in real life because this is in my own half, and it's not it's in my sort of forty percent of the field rather than in the opposite sixty percent of the field. But in Football Manager, oh. it's counting these as your pressing numbers rather than the numbers higher up the field. Okay, so so for me, so for me to understand this, so if I'm using my defensive winger, pressing winger, um, <laughs> they're winning the, winning the ball up the higher up the pitch. That's where my that's where my stats should be counting, is that yes, right? Not, not yeah, for if yeah. not for if my, yes, my defender is making you, you a can tackle imagine your fullbacks tackling a lot, even, and they will be probably getting a lot of these defensive so actions. It's yeah. my, my striker pressing the goalkeeper, my, my, that doesn't, my yeah, midfielders so. midfielders pushing up to force yeah. errors, higher at the pitch. That's what should be tracked, but isn't tracked. It's the yeah. opposite way around. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Cool. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the numbers you've got to be careful of. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, excellent. Okay, so so what, what now? Where do we where do we go with this then? What, how do we start? Yeah, so yeah, we can go to... back to the piece of chart as well. Yeah, there. Oh, hmm. This is so beautiful. This is what I like. See, I like look. And again, I know that I'm probably going to come across slightly like catching up with the world, but it took me a little while to understand the pizza charts. And again, we we had a bit of a chat, Jeff, about this on the Patreon. But now I see it. I can't unsee it. Like <laughs> it, I'm a visual learner, so yes, this yes. this is helpful for me, you know. And I feel as though the, the presentation of stats now in journalism and media and of course in stats analysis itself is really helpful and it just is a splash straight away and go you can't hide behind that this guy yeah, is yeah. is completing loads of passes this guy is not losing the ball like because otherwise where do you find that yeah. in game without that's, ripping that's all exactly. the data out and putting it into another spreadsheet sorry Jeff. no no exactly that it's it's you you can view it in game by by dealing with views in your squad view, but it's just a table. I I don't know about yourselves, um, but if I see a table full of numbers, my eyes glaze over. Like mm. I I will look at it. I will possibly sit there without progressing the game for half an hour, looking at a table of information, and I will have learned absolutely nothing by the end of it because my mind's just. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't I think care the enough thing, about numbers. <laughs> so I think the difficult thing for me, and I guess it's sort of what you're just touched upon there, Jeff, is like, is I don't know enough about what good looks like when I'm just presented with numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, this is, is about this is, is, is two would... dribbles. Is two dribbles yeah. good? Is it or is it really bad? Like, whereas if you see it visually, there's no hiding behind that. That yeah. is good. That is what good looks like. Sorry, Aaron. Now, this is where I sort of, like, when I do my little data searches, sometimes we do go through the league's average. So what's happening in the league, and we sort of go through that average as well. Or another thing I do as well, so let's, um, if I'm looking for a striker, I would then go to, like, I would just go to the player search, take everything off. So I'm looking at all the unrealistic players. So Mbappe, Haaland's on my list. And I select the top 20, or who I believe are the top 20. So it would be, like, Haaland, Mbappe, so forth, so forth, Lahovic. And then again, I'll be getting their numbers and I'll be working around the average between those. So if I'm looking for a conversion rate, I'll be like, right, the top 20 strikers at the moment. And then I'll get their average, I'll get their conversion rate. And then I'll work out the average between that. And I'll be like, that's my starting point. But it doesn't always work because sometimes you are going to find that striker that is dribbling a lot, but his conversion rate is slightly just below your mm -hmm. average. And then that's where you sort of make your impulse like you you're reacting uh, to that basically and i guess it depends upon the type of player you're trying to buy as yeah. well so I, so I want personality so, so, as well right so like if you're just hitting the average on everything like that's like oh this player keeps because you do have that in your save when you're doing these searches that like, this player just keeps popping up but for me as well i like personality i don't mind mm -hmm. if you're slightly falling behind something if you're ridiculously high on something oh. else well so like prime r9 for example he could finish but yeah, you know yeah, yeah. He could yeah. also create. He could dribble. Yeah. He creates. He gets see, movement. He that, drives the rest of the team on. You're not going to see that in just goals and shots. And yeah, exactly. XG. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'd say even if you're looking for a big, so if you've got all your numbers right, conversion rate, uh, XG per game, you've got your dribbles and you've got your aerials as well. Then you can imagine R9's aerial win percentage is not going to be that great. <laughs> but yeah. then you're going to see that, wait, he's a striker and he's still dribbling four times a game? That mm -hmm. In Football Manager, that is ridiculous. And you're like, okay, so something's telling me this lad might be special. Mm -hmm. Or it could be worth the opposite. He might be fooling a lot behind his dribbles, but his win, his aerial duels and the win is just like, I can't miss out on the striker. This guy's going to be an absolute beast in well, there. I, I suppose we've got, um, we've got a player at the minute and I, you, you may have seen him on as part of my team. There's a a, a French Portuguese lad I've got called uh, called Vient, and he's playing in my enganche role. And something drew me to him straight away, and I just called him Giroud. I was like, he is Olivier <laughs> Giroud, right? He will do what Olivier Giroud does, and I couldn't quantify what Olivier Giroud does other than look beautiful. But I was like, he will just do that, and <laughs> and we're looking at him and like. People in the, in the in the chat are going like, "Well, what does he bring to the to the team?" I'm like, "Well, he scored 19 goals so far, so probably that. Um, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's created 12 goals, so probably that. 
but yeah, he gets an average rating of 6.9, so clearly nothing um, to the team. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's how you envisage these people and yeah. how you can work those numbers, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. So that centre back that you had, you. No, go on, because that centre back you had on the screen, sorry. I just wanted to ask is, are you happy with what you're seeing there? That, mm. So some people might be seeing that and they'd be like, yeah, it looks good, but I don't know exactly what I'm looking at, that sort of thing. Uh, is are you happy yeah. with those numbers and is he doing what you're asking him to do and if you are sorry it's going to be part of, free part and if you are looking for a replacement what how would you go about searching for that replacement mm. cool yeah so i mean first one yes i'm i'm wildly happy with luis um <laughs> he's he's um i actually expected it when i took over 11 games ago or whatever it was, I expected him to be the backup. Um, but he, due to injury, he's been able to step in and get a chance. And what I can see here is close to perfect for what I want. To see a player who's on the ball, I mean, I I still find the idea of 90 passes a game from a single player quite obscene. Because we're not that possession head. That is. Mm. Um, that is and to then... So yeah, and and then to be safe with the ball as well is well. I suppose you've got to be safe with the ball to see that much ball because if you kept giving it away, <laughs> the team wouldn't have enough. You know, yeah. Gonna, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I quite like the idea I, of give the ball to the centre half who then pings it forwards. That's still ninety <laughs> passes technically, isn't it? But it's all like <laughs> up towards the corner flags. Like. That would be great if you could have 90, 90 passes, but um, pass success rate 1%. He's hit, he's hit <laughs> his man accuracy. once, and we scored from that, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> but in terms of, like, um, is he doing, what What can I see from here? So from here, we can see that he is involved in a lot of passes. He's also, we've got this nice, big, solid block for progressive pass as well. He's in roughly there, the 70th percentile for progressive passes which sounds good but when you take it through the lens of the fact that he's making 90 passes a game it's not as impressive as someone who has the same value from 50 passes Hmm. so there is an element of you've got a nice visual thing here that helps but sometimes you need to look at that wider context so for a player that might occasionally be a libero, and I would want him to be a lot more involved in the progressive elements of the game, he's not quite what I'm looking for. But he's still bloody amazing at the things that I want. <laughs> Moreover, mm. he's winning 87% of his tackles. To win that many ground, to win that percentage of ground jewels is, is fantastic. He doesn't engage in many, just 1.24 per game. But when that situation arises, he's reliable. Again, mm as we spoke about earlier, if a player's not engaging in that many tackles, it's not the volume that matters, it's the success rate. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the same again for for headers one here as well. 76% is pretty good for a guy that six, look, all, all the six footers out there, I'm not calling you small. You're taller than me. <laughs> I, 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 know my, I know my place is a short king, right? Um, but six foot is still generally quite short for a centre back. Um, yeah. So he's winning. He's winning at a high a high clip, regardless, which is good. Where he's performing badly is possession one, which is going to be another one of the limitation elements um, of this approach, which is the numbers are low but we have had more of the ball than other teams in the league. And so we've had fewer opportunities to win possession. Um, Nonetheless, I'd still, if I'm looking for a replacement and someone who is perhaps going to be a little bit more savvy when it comes to sweeping up those clearances, essentially just regaining the ball and getting us secure, then possession one would be an element I'd look at. And I'd, I'd start by looking for players with a higher value than what Luis has. It's 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 great and easy to compare internally, which is fine <laughs> so when you've got good players. That's interesting then that you've instantly gone for. I would look at someone with a higher value because I think at the minute the way that I'm trying to do my save, and I guess this is the beauty of 
data and, and how we use FM, and we all play FM slightly differently. I'm looking to, if I had to replace Luis, my my view would instantly be going, who's doing that job but cheaper? Like, I would straight away go, how can I save money on this guy? Like, how can I sell him and find someone else who's doing the same job, whether it's his wages are like 10 grand less or his value is is like, um, the example being we, we signed a left back for free and he had 19 assists in, in a single season. We sold him for 20 million pounds. I replaced him with two free transfer left backs, one of which is Vinicius, who's currently the second highest average rating in the league at the end of the season. So for me, I'm like, we've we've sold him. We maybe haven't got the full 20 goal contributions that we had previously, but we've got 20 million quid in the bank, a player who's on less wages, and a backup as well for the same money. Does that make sense? Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's um, something to to touch on here as well. Is one of the the key considerations here is that for a player who is currently valued at about four point three million and mm. is on quite quite modest wages, even for the Segunda Division in Spain, um, there is no great value to me selling him. If I could sign a player, if I could sell for four million, and sign him for someone as good for two million, that sounds great. But I've got a player here who is performing well, and if he continues to perform well, maybe next season I can sell him for eight million. Maybe the year after that I can sell him for twelve. And as long as those wages don't move too much, it becomes <laughs> viable. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's, a, it's a it's a planning approach, isn't it? I think that's that's one of the things that we need to look at with with stats and and data. And for people who are who are new into this this world, maybe. And I will say as well, by the way, especially especially for audio listeners, the the skin that we're looking at here is attributeless as well. So we're not looking at this player has has fifteen for anticipation or or, or sixteen for tackling, whatever. So it is literally just looking at the numbers, like. Because I think we are all conditioned to go, well, we've played this game for 30 years. We look and go, we know what a 12 is in comparison to the rest of the league. We know what an 11 is in comparison to the rest of the league. So we're instantly making our eyeball judgments going, ah, he's probably good enough. Maybe we'll have a little look at the at the scout report that says, okay, he's currently third in the league for progressive, uh, for, for, for pressures possibly, or he's, he's uh, second in the league for uh, headers attempted. And you build the picture up a little bit in your head that way about what the sort of player is. Um, but to get into, the, once you start touching onto those little areas for, oh, I wonder if you can do this. I wonder if you can do that. I think going back to just a standard attribute search is really difficult because once you've been given the info, you kind of go well i'm going to keep using the info a hundred percent i i think again uh, i know that i'm looping back to what mm. i said about Mies hilgers earlier but i've had enough situations now where players with attributes i would have never ever considered have performed well that i don't care as much about attributes i still care yeah yeah like mm. I still, there will still be times where I look at a player who's performing magnificently and I see one or two things that just don't feel right and I'm out of there. I mean, <laughs> a good example here is Sinan Bakis. Now, he's played 524 minutes, started seven games, scored three goals. Um, he's, he's scored nearly double his XG. But his work yeah. rate is low and his teamwork is low. Mm. And that just doesn't feel right in a single striker formation for me. I need I need a grifter. And so mm. even though he's doing well, I've replaced him with Keenan Davis of all people. Now, yeah, but so before... this is, I was going to say, no, I was just <laughs> yeah, going yeah, to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm hoping you're going to say the similar thing as I'm going to go, go mm -hmm. on, please. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, just to point out, Keenan Davis scored the goal that kept you in Serie A oh, yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Keenan Davis <laughs> yeah, is a legend. He did. Yeah. Um, he also scored three goals in the entirety of his Villa career. So you know. <laughs> Sorry, you were going to say. 
No, yeah, sorry. I was going to say, so even if we go back to the uh, last player's profile, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. Sin on Bacchus. You changed it there. Because I was going to say, wait, he was looking a bit different last time. So even, <laughs> even though he's scoring, he's scoring all right. What alarmed me before you said anything, before even teamwork and work, right? I didn't even look at that. What alarmed me was the difference in the goals in the XG. If someone's ridiculously outscoring the XG, to me, that could, they can be going through a purple patch. And mm. actually, what when I'm doing real life scouting, sometimes you do see a, a striker with high XG who's slightly underperforming. Now, I prefer I would prefer that guy over someone that has low XG but is the top goal scorer because that mm. person may have just literally overperform that season. Whereas this one's more reliable. I know he's actually constantly getting into good goal scoring opportunities, but he's also scoring as well. Obviously I'm not, I'm not going to sign someone that's only scored three with an XG of 18, but if he's, if his XG is like 18 and he's only scored 15, 16, for me, that is still pretty decent. But if your XG is at eight, but you've scored 18, that for me is, I wouldn't say alarming, but you would say, he might just be having one of those seasons and the other guy is a bit more reliable. Now, you said that you prefer Keenan, Dav- uh, Keenan Davis. If we go back to Keenan Davis now, I would also say this is why I prefer him because of that. He's now, his XG is a lot closer to the goals that he scored. So it's not only is he scoring goals, but he's also constantly getting into those good comp- uh, goal scoring opportunities. But that also could be down to his teamwork. And you pointed out before, maybe he's listening That's- to the instructions more and he's finding himself in that in that uh, scoring position because of the teamwork. So sort of way it can all link up, but my first thought was at that the non XG and the gap between the non XG and the goal scored was a bit mm. hey, what's going mm. on there? <laughs> I think this ties into something that Aaron and I spoke about and, and will continue to speak about as these episodes go on, is is what do you want from your players? Like what do you expect a certain player to do? And I've said it time and time again and again Trek's video when when Trek comes on will will make more sense with his blueprint. For me, I I have a DNA within my club of every single player, whoever you are, has to have good teamwork, good work rate, good level of determination, and good fitness. Because my simplistic thinking is, I want these eleven players to work as hard as they possibly can, and what we lack in talent, we make up for in hard work. Yeah, we can learn to out... Like, you can't outwork us. That's what I want. I want to be able to go for the full 90-odd minutes. And I've argued back and forth about whether a teamwork or a work rate is needed in, in a striker, for example. You know, could you have just someone who's just like Gary Lineker, just a goal hanger, just sits there, bangs them in, his goal scoring record says he's pretty good as a striker. But has the game changed where you do now need a striker to to press the ball, to create opportunities. And he might not be the guy scoring it, but because he's closing down, then it opens up an opportunity for somebody else. And yeah, in a single striker system, a work work rate of nine or whatever. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It just, <laughs> don't, don't, just, it just sits wrong. And then you look at, at Davis's pressures attempted and it's so much higher. And I'm yeah. like, that, that's what I want from my, from my forward. I want, I want that. Playing up top on your own is the is the lonely job. I want you to be running in the channels, chasing the ball down. <laughs> and it's it's about understanding your team as well. Like you've got an enganch already in your system. You can't mm. afford to have someone else being a little bit relaxed up front. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You can you can have you can have one or two of these luxury players that might not do quite so much outside out of possession and who might save themselves to to be impactful when you do have the ball. But if the whole of your front line is like that, you're going to have problems. Yeah. Yeah. I think as well, this is, this is leading me to an idea. This is like live, like sort of show planning as we're, as we're going through. Um, I think what we need to do, Aaron, we need to try and, and plot something as we go through another episode. We'll, we'll come up with a, with a system and we'll compare all the all the stats and stuff, and we're mm-hmm. working out with with Mustard. I don't know how we'll work it. I'll I'll, I'll think by the end of the episode. There should be two systems, idea, right? right? And then what? Yeah, like, like what, we, what we recruit to a system. That, yeah, you recruit to a system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and we 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 go back there and we work that one out. So so let's just think. Okay, um, while I have my little brain fart on on air, um, this is amazing. By the way, to see this all all visualized, 
what about for people who play with either a vanilla skin or don't have access to something like this? Like, where would they find that sort of information? Yeah, sure. In game. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just pop back to the squad view here. So there are a, a few ways that you can access this information. Now, I'm not someone who messes around much with views. Um, so I do apologize. I don't have anything I don't think. Oh, I do have some views. Uh, it shows you how much I pay attention to this section. I didn't even know that I've got them. Here. <laughs> I love the fact it's also called Musterman for? as well. Good, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't got a view here. I bet it's got my name on it. Oh, maybe I have got a view. <laughs> you, you know what that is? Is I, I, when I started doing YouTube, I'm, I'm guessing that I was like, oh, I need to have views, don't I? So that that people and then never used them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but essentially, when when you're in any kind of view, whether you're in the basic ones when you start with the game, you can add columns that will show you that information for players. So we have stats chalkboard and stats general. Now, I, I, I'm I'm so sorry, Aaron. I'm not trying to trigger you, uh, but because there is no glossary available with the game, um, there's no specific useful information as to where the stat you're looking for is going to be. You see, mm. stats chalkboard sounds like it's all your advanced stats. But if you want expected goals over performance and expected assists, that's in stats general. Um, so yeah. you do mm. have you do have to dig around a little bit to find the metrics you're looking for. And get used to it. But yeah. you can basically mm. any metric that is recorded in game, you can view in the squad uh, page here by inserting a column. We can go here. So let's. Let's add in non-penalty expected goals per 90 minutes. And now we've got, we can see here, as a per 90 measure, which all, all that does is it divides how many, how, the non-penalty XG of the player by all the minutes that they've played and multiply it by 90. So it's what you could expect them to have if they were to play a full match. It's just a, a very easy way of standardizing for players that play different minutes, different start. Some players start, some players come on as subs, some get substituted off. Um, and most of the stats will have a corresponding um, raw number as well. So if we go for non-penalty XG here, we can see that that as well. And you can spend hours going through and building your list depending which at, which metrics it is that you think are important to the way you want your team to play. Um, I'm guessing, looking at this, this was probably what I used for exporting information for making the pizza charts. Um, <laughs> there we go. I've solved, I've solved that mystery. Um, and that's, that's one way that we can have that information available, even in the base skin. Um, mm -hmm. you can you can create these views here you can create them in the tactic screen so it comes up here you can create it in your your scouting searches mm -hmm. i think i do have one here called fluminense because that's what i'm currently working on um mm -hmm. and we've we can have that here and you can have it in your short list but you need it needs to be a completely different view yeah which is a ah, don't yeah don't. oh god you've set him oh. off you've set him off so because my <laughs> thing is so earlier when you lot was talking about numbers and tables and you can't i i jumped out of that conversation because i'll be totally honest with you and i know sometimes when people are viewing it they must be like what is he looking at but i absolutely love it but i just think because i just know where i am and I've, i spoke about this before like i clicky 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 without knowing i'm clicky clicky so that going back and forth screen and going to play a search and shortlist and quickly comparing numbers like that so like drilled into me. I don't realize how, yeah, I don't realize how long it can be for someone else sort of thing. But so for me, when I'm doing my player search, I have, I've got my whole view, but I've got the same thing. So that I've got it perfectly set up and how I want it. And then it goes to shortlist thinking, yeah, let me import it. And game says, no. Nah. And I have to do it all over again. Yeah, that's. Uh. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I don't know if you're like me it has to always be in exactly the same order as well yeah it has so i've to, got it has to constantly to, yeah, yeah. jump between the screens to make sure i'm adding yeah, them it has the to same be, yeah width. yeah exactly it's just so you don't throw yourself off yeah oh and then if <laughs> you're that's so 
I was gonna say, no, I think no, I think no. that's the thing. It's 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 the it's the precise nature of it. Like this is when, and again, without you know, over trivializing the term OCD, it, this is where it feels like because you're comparing you're comparing everything, things have to be in exactly the same order. Otherwise, yeah, 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 yeah. you're trying to find numbers that just like, yeah, well, that's on, what it was over there for a second. That's it's when like things start going to be like away. yeah. Yeah. So, so it's not an it's not an OCD thing. It, it it has to be in the exact order. Otherwise, it, it's just a nightmare. <laughs> so, one of my one of the things I've really struggled with is that because of a lot of the um, Moneyball Clinic videos that I've made, I've got these big spreadsheets with every single metric in, and that yeah. that comes across really really wide in this screen. Um, you can't see everything, but yeah. I also can't use that spreadsheet because it's got too much data. It takes forever for <laughs> me to run a search in it because there's literally like yeah, 120 yeah. million different numbers in there that I've started to to just focus on creating views for exporting for just the stats I need. Mm -hmm. And that means every time I do a new episode, everything's in a different place. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's not that's not ideal. Yeah. That's not ideal. I must admit, I, I started I started um, exporting. So I'm exporting my data from my my staff. My squad screen is where I get all all of my squad end of season data from. Yeah, and then the player search screen, I get my data that I want to compare for when I'm trying to sign new players. So. I have that screen there you got there and I'll maybe search for the top five or, or 10 leagues or whatever. And I'll drill it into uh, position because I know that if I go and there's like 2000 players or whatever, I'm like, I don't need 2000 players. Um, but I'll try and sort of like keep it. So that I'm maybe getting comparable players. Cause again, I'm in Greece. I don't want to be, you know, trying to work out who the top defenders are in the premier league. Cause I'm not trying to buy those players. I'm trying to find who the top <laughs> players are in in Holland or who the top players are in Scotland. Like and I can get them to come over and, and perform really well or in the second division in Germany or whatever might be great. Uh, yeah, similar to what you've got there. And then I'll I'll pull all that data out, pop that into a spreadsheet. And again it's a bit long and it's a bit too numbery. Um but I will highlight players that I think are decent and I'll copy them and I'll put them into another tab on the spreadsheet. So I've only got like five or six. To yeah. say these are my five or six players I'm going to look at, and then I'll come and I'll copy and paste my players that I want to compare against. So I'm not having 500 players on a screen. I just want to have four or five in front of me and go right. Uh, his numbers better or worse than than this guy's numbers, and then I'll try and build the comparison in my head. So okay, fine. He's at Kafisha, for example, who are a bit of a yo-yo club in Greece. He's playing really, really great. Is it that he's playing really great? Like, I guess defenders are, right, he's making loads of tackles. Okay, he's under pressure a lot. You know, goalkeeper, he's making loads of saves because his team's at the bottom of the league. Like, it's taken, it's trying to adapt the context, isn't it, from yeah. the numbers you've got. Whereas, as I say, again, without, you know, saying too much, the pizza charts are visual. It's like, this is what's happening. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it takes less interpretation, I suppose. A hundred percent. I mean, like, I, I've now got this list here. Like you've done, this is, mm. I think this is top 20 leagues that finish in the summer. Um, mm. And it's perfectly fine looking through and going, and okay, right, I now want to only look at centre-backs. Accomplished because, you know, maybe maybe I'll accept a right-back. And I can I can look through and I can see okay suddenly we've got some leaders with interceptions we can filter it through, and we can see who's doing really really well and that's 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 great and I can look we can look across and we can see right okay the first few are good at tackling, the next few aren't quite so good. These guys aren't particularly good at heading, but Guardiol is. Mm. It is quite possible and quite easy to to compare through game with the base skin. Um, and then you know whether you you take that externally to a spreadsheet or whether you add them to a shortlist and you just shortlist four or five players so you can look at these same things and compare them a little bit closer. Yeah, it's certainly mm. certainly possible and useful. Um, mm. 
So this said. is actually exactly how I do it. Sorry, this is exactly how I do it. So obviously mm. I would be doing my searches or I'll just have it like this. So I'll have the leagues that I'm interested in because, for example, when I was with Feyenoord, it was like the Mexican and the Brazilian. So I would yeah. have these leagues. Sometimes it gets a bit weird because obviously it's starting and end date. It's a bit different. So you've got to also search by sometimes games played or starting appearances, what I like to use as well. But mm. I would have it all like this. But in my head, so like you said, um, uh, Kunde, the K-Bar, they're not so good in the air compared to Garvey or Medina. That's like that's true. That's also true. But at the same time, I've also got an average as well in my head. So if say my average is 60%, I'd be like, they're not as strong, but at least they are on the shortlist, basically. Mm-hmm. They all go on the shortlist and then I'll make my final decisions. So I'll get I'll look at all of these players, then I'll start creating a shortlist from there. I'll start selecting the players that interest me. Then I'll move them all into a shortlist. And so now I'm just in a shortlist of players who I like. And then I can also again just directly compare them. And then again, you start just slightly removing people like no personality, <laughs> no personality, mm. just looking at data. <laughs> no person, no, he's a bit boring. <laughs> Wouldn't take him out for lunch. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then you joke about start. it. <laughs> I, I, need, yeah, exactly. I, need a, I need at least one lighthearted player in my squad at all times. If yeah, every see, single just player is, that, is that. serious, I'm not, I'm not down for it. That, that's what's not, <laughs> not got it right. You need, you need a joker. Yeah, you do. Yeah. True. Yeah, True. and that's again, that's what my final decisions when you start looking at players, you start getting your top five and like, okay, they're all good. You can't really pick one. And you start looking at these details like, this is where scout, uh, scouting the players is still important for me because they might find something like he's consistent or inconsistent. I also like to look at the players' media handling and style and their personality in game as well. And these are where I start to make my final decisions. Very quickly, while the show's on, have you remembered, if this is YouTube, to hit like on the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and leave us a nice little comment as well, because that really helps everything out. It makes the algorithm pick us up, puts us in front of more eyes. That would be great. Gives us a bit of conversation to go with as well. Obviously, if you're on Spotify, you know, just subscribe on Spotify, leave us a little review, leave some comments on that as well, and join the Discord. Come and get in the Discord. Come and have some conversation. That's where it all happens. There's loads of people having some great stuff in there. We can talk tactics. We can talk uh, game modes. We can talk player searches. We can talk real football. We can talk anything over in the Discord. So all those links in the description below basically it helps us it really helps us get the show in front of the most eyes possible so if you can do all those things that would be awesome and be much appreciated but yeah back to the show so with this then then jeff would you be looking at like would you say you're a hundred percent a stats approach guy or are you maybe like you're led by the scout reports possibly for what information they bring in are you a bit of a mixture of the both or is there a little bit of just i just got a feeling for somebody as well <laughs> and there's like just that little bit of like intuition as well yeah absolutely so it very much depends i i don't have a very specific play style even if people think mm-hmm. of me as the moneyball guy or whatever you know it can be down to the narrative. It's out, this is a good story. This is a player coming back to a team that he was released from five years ago. It can mm-hmm. be that that kind of personality led. I'm just like, I really want somebody who's who, who's this standing beacon of, of of the community who will come in and set the standards. And that's actually the focus beyond attributes or stats or reports or anything at all. Um, mm. But being able to use data and, and and drill into it I find quite interesting and fun so with the Moneyball Clinic series it's great to explore that a lot further whereas with Zaragoza and Pauk before that um, it was actually largely based on reputation I wanted to sign players that will make the team seem bigger on the European stage so that we can help bring more players to us in the future because it might be good that, okay, is there going to be someone that no one's heard of here? I could sign Geordi Polar. That's great. He might be, he, oh. he looks rubbish. Um, mm. oh. <laughs> um, in oh, this case, yeah. it's that. Um, <laughs> it's a, <laughs> Nothing but lose the ball. <laughs> and doesn't lose the ball, is that right? No, he does lose the ball. He loses the ball a lot. Right. 
However, <laughs> this is why I shouldn't be doing the um, scouting. And it go, he, he saves the ball all oh, the no, time. Sorry, no, no, he, no, he loses it. He, he keeps the ball. He keeps the ball. Like, yeah. Yeah, he he does not yeah. just keep the ball. He just holds it. He just stands there. The Zerbi style. Just put your studs in it. Exactly. <laughs> just to be clear about the limitations of this approach, if you don't have the leagues loaded, you don't get the complete stats for them. Yes. And then you get lovely yeah. pizza yeah. charts like this. <laughs> Yeah, that was going to be a question, actually. What are the limitations of this kind of approach? And that's probably one of them. I suppose, right? <laughs> it's a big one. A hundred percent. You've got to be willing to load in a lot of leagues. Um, and that, that slows down the game massively. Um, yeah. In terms of other limitations, you are limited to what is available in game. If you want um, opposition passes per defensive action, um, when looking at a team to be measured in, like real life, you can't do that. Um, mm. uh, that's that's not true. You you can, but you'd have to do it manually and spend like manually. The next, I was gonna say yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Seventy two hours analyzing your last game for, for very little <laughs> information of any great value. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. But in the way that you're also limited to what is available in game, you're limited to the way that it's shown in game as well. So if I go back mm. to this here. I, in this view, I've got interceptions and I've got clearances. Now, if I'm if I'm searching for a player with those metrics, I might prefer someone who has higher interceptions but lower clearances than the person I'm comparing them to. And so I want some form of combined defensive actions. I still can't do that in game. The information is there, but you have to do it in your head or take it externally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Which and we haven't even touched on the woodwork yet. The final limitation <laughs> is fidelity. Yes, uh, the, uh, the woodwork is the final frontier of everything, isn't it? With uh, <laughs> with this game of uh, red. Um, so I'll tell it, you what, it's, while, it's while, a... while I sorry. no no. Oh. No, I was going to say like while while Aaron's going to going to start melting, I was going to ask another question, but it sounds like you, you you're about to 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 re revalidate a point. So, so yeah, you go, you go. Oh, I was going to say is that when when we talk about fidelity, it works both ways. So one of the great advantages of FM's match engine is that they have their own XG model because the game literally knows the exact percentage chance of every shot being scored. It knows mm -hmm. the conditions. It knows what the outcome likelihood is. XG models in the real world are based on historical data, but they're going to be they're, they're going to be very fluid, and they're going to um, be dependent on certain different factors. Which is why, if you see XG from Statsbomb, it might be different to what you see from Y Scout and from Opta. That means that what we see as XG values in game are actually more accurate. That's brilliant. Mm. We can make some really informed decisions based on conversion rates and XG performance. The flip side of that is that I'm we don't know we don't know the the exact length of a progressive pass. We don't know the boundaries where things change. When a shot hits the woodwork, sometimes it's recorded as hitting the woodwork. Sometimes it's it's recorded as off off target. Sometimes it's recorded as a blocked shot, and all these things will impact stuff further down the line, like your shot accuracy. I'm and also so are... pretty sure this goes for. So I don't know if it works for players, but for teams, tackles win. It's not necessarily you winning the ball. You also have to get possession of the ball afterwards as well. Mm. So this is what like I remember creating a tactic. I'm like, why is my percentage so low? And then I'm watching the game. I'm like. But we're tackling the ball's just falling into them, and I'm like, I'm now starting to realize, wait, that's why because we've got to somehow get our players bunched closer together when we're out of possession, so that when we do win, win the, the ball, ball, there's a higher, yeah. yeah, higher chance of us regaining possession. But I don't know if that also is for a player as well. So if now I'm now I'm wondering now if my centre back has got a low percentage, is that because his centre back partner can't get there to recover possession or? Is that necessarily down to him being bad at tackling, or is it because we just can't pick up the second ball? I think this is some this is some of the bit that I think is is great for this sort of conversation as well, especially yeah. as we're, we're gearing towards FM twenty five, and there's still so much life lifespan in FM twenty four. Like playing this style of of, of save, 
I, I guess we just don't know. Like, there's no transparency as to what the data and the stats actually mean and how Football Manager interprets these. Because, as you're saying there, like, of course the XG model is going to be perfect because it's a video game. It's programmed like that. You're literally <laughs> just showing that you're showing what is actually happening. Yeah, you're showing. Yeah, 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 like, given- <laughs> you know, because that's that's the thing. Going, oh, how, how's the XG? Well, it was it was programmed at this, so therefore it has to be that. Um, but there are, of course, there are some some values which which make no sense at all and and we do have to talk about them as well so i guess jeff with that what what i mean you've mentioned a couple of them but what what stats do you look at in game and just go where have they got that from <laughs> <laughs> my big one is pressures okay yes so pressure pressuring no. is such an important part of the game They've made changes in, in in terms of the tax creator about how we go about it and how it's it's no longer closing down, but we, we're talking about angles. Yet there is absolutely zero way that we can see pressures. If we go to a game afterwards, like that Andorra game that we had earlier, we've got this analytical data all available to us. We can see pretty much everything. We can see all the shots. We can see all the passes, all the crosses. Now, is a successful pass is a cross a successful pass is a certain, um, um, sometimes a tackle one will also count as possession one because if mm. the player wins the tackle and recovers the ball they're considered ball. as separate actions yeah, yeah. Mm. but nowhere here do I have pressures pressures so I can't I don't know what the game records as a pressure I don't know what is the term successful pressure. Is a successful pressure when you as the player recover the ball? Or is a successful pressure when the player then makes a mistake? Is the successful pressure when someone else on your team regains possession somewhere else on the pitch? What 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 is it? Um yet yeah, I still use pressures <laughs> attempted as a really key metric in almost everything I do. Yeah, and yeah, I have yeah, no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit like that with distance covered. I'm like, yeah. why is my centre back covering so much? Why is he knackered? <laughs> what is going on? I look at his distance covered. I'm like, where have they got this number from? What is it? But now I'm thinking in my head, like sometimes if you do actually watch the match in gym, right? So I don't know if this is actually counting it, but so if you've got a set piece. Just watch how your centre back sprints to get back in position. I was, I was about to ask that. <laughs> I was thinking it must be that. But well, you're still covering the same distance, right? But that just must be. Like, yeah, here we are. We've got his little. Is <laughs> it just a covered look? He's off. That for a centre back, that already, that's the opening, the opening two minutes of a game, and he's mm-hmm. almost covered so much area. That is. But this is. This is actually one of my my, my only uh, criticism that I raised during uh, the uh, oh, he's he's away, he's away <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, maybe that's the corner. Maybe that's the corner he's gone up to take place. Yeah. Well, do you see what I mean? Like, this post. is what he's this yeah. is what he's got to do, and this is the type of something that you just don't even take into consideration when you're even searching for these players as well. Like your centre back, it might be important that he has good stamina because. It's all good that he does this for the first 50 minutes, but he needs to do this all the way up to the 90th minute. And yeah. can he? That, that is all there my days. Like, oh, what's he going now? What's he... <laughs> he's, he's clearly bolted bolt back there on the counter-attack, hasn't Libero, he? Libero, so... he's dead there. This is Libero. It's not even the Libero. Well, no, this is, this is not. But you, you've got to watch Libero's in-game because like, mm. football manager is a game. Games have limitations. That's, that's part and parcel mm. of it. There has to be a specific trigger which says I move from defence to midfield. That's just, it's how a game has to be programmed, right? So no criticism to the devs there. But if you watch a libero through the course of a game, it becomes so incredibly obvious when that trigger happens because you'll have moments where a player is in defence, the ball crosses a certain area, they run forwards, the ball goes back a yard, they run back. The ball goes forward a yard, they run forwards. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, wonderful yeah. to watch. Yeah, I get that sometimes with my wingers tracking back. Is that at first it's so determined, and then it just gets to a point where it's like, I'm done. <laughs> my job's done. Yeah. I'm done. I'm, I'm done enough. <laughs> 
Um, so, so but, but, what, what was it then? That what was the the trigger? Sorry, Jeff. What was the trigger for driving you into this style of of, of gameplay, as opposed oh, to just dealing with the the the, the, the vanilla way of, of doing it? Like, what, what what was your thing going? Like, I have to I have to do it this way. I at least have to try. So, there's a couple of things. I think one uh, many many moons ago, there was an attributeless skin out there, and I tried it, mm. and I lasted about two months in game before I quit mm. and I never tried that way again for two years. <laughs> so there was, there was always an element that thought that the challenge would be interesting. Um, mm -hmm. What changed in the more, more recent years and then starting to make skins myself is that ultimately I've played this game for a very long time. There's a familiarity and sometimes with that familiarity you get into habits that you you know it's you subconsciously you click here you look for this thing you click there you look for this thing and everything's on mm. autopilot and i wanted to break that habit i wanted to think yeah. about what is it that i actually value from a player how can i if i'm if i'm trying to get players to play a certain way shouldn't i actually make an effort to focus on how we can actually do that um and that just happened to coincide with a new attribute list skin that came out. And I tried that <laughs> and I lasted a lot longer. Um, so, so that certainly helped um, along the way. I think there is also an element of data overload. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, if I load up the um, default skin for time being, mm. ultimately, and this is, again, I mentioned, I think, before we press record, or maybe right at the beginning, um, all players have ego of some sort. Um, mm -hmm. I have this filter whereby I go, right, okay, I know that when I'm going into a player's profile, I'm looking for this thing. And mm -hmm. I get into a player's profile, and I don't look at that thing at all because I look at the attributes, because it's the <laughs> thing that I see there. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't like to admit that I'm that easily distracted. <laughs> but, but I think I think it kills saves, though, like, though, don't like... it? I don't know if it's for you, but it kills saves, right? Because you start losing mm -hmm. that. Why am I even? I, I've lost what I've even started to say for. I remember I saw the Sparta Rotterdam. Like it began with Mexico only. Then I saw a Brazilian. I'm like, oh, we'll just have one Brazilian. Then it's like, you know what? South America, North America, and yeah, it just ruined us. <laughs> I mean, even. Even even what I'm doing at the minute, because I'm I'm you know I'm trying a money ball approach to to my recruitment, but even then I know that I'm still going. Well, I need some youngsters in, so I'll just sign some youngsters because that, that. So I'm not <laughs> taking that approach fully. So there is that because though that information is there at the start, and it's the attributes which, and I play attribute masking, which I know doesn't give me complete attribute lus. I like to sort of treat and go. Well, this is how I feel as I'm playing this slightly more realistic. And we have obviously mentioned previous episodes of, you know, is FM too easy? Can you change the way you play? And, and I think that's, this is where I'm at as well. I'm going, I want something a bit different now. I don't want to just mm -hmm. look at the numbers. Like someone shouted out a while ago on, on, uh, on Twitter going, you know, what if the players attributes were out of a hundred? And I was like, you know what? Yeah. There's a lot more scope from a hundred to 20, isn't there? Mm, like, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so there's that, but. Yeah, I think that's for me. I'm like looking at that a little bit, going, it's a little bit different. But you've got the vanilla skin on here. Sorry, Jeff. So, yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's essentially the same as that. But also, my attention span is awful. Mm. <laughs> because if I if I wanted to come in, I wanted to look at Sin and Bacchus's yellow card accumulation. I would click on his profile, and my eyes would fixate up here, and I'd forget mm. about this. I I, yeah. I I wouldn't even look at this. Yeah. And then I'd go back to the squad scene and then I'd go, oh, wait a second. I wanted to see how he's doing for yellow cards. I'd click here again and I'd stare at this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, would you, and would you look at the average rating and go, oh, it's green. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, doing, he's doing great. <laughs> you know what? I was giving this guy there some was... stick earlier. I'm not looking at his attributes and I'm like, I quite like this guy. <laughs> he's got the long shots, the composure. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? <laughs> See, this is why right. attributes are bad. Like, now I'm thinking mm -hmm. about signing this guy. <laughs> Can you sign him off me in my own save? That would be quite handy because 
I don't know. There's just something Zlatan about him. Like, I don't know. Like, he could produce magic. He's not going to be your... Ah, oh, maybe I'm giving Zlatan too much stick here, but he's not going to be your ultimate team player, but he might just produce that 90-minute, 30 yards <laughs> that you just desperately but, needed. But I think that's what attributes do. Attributes, like Aaron, yeah, just, Aaron what, what just happened, yeah. has allowed him to fill the blanks in and go... I can see him this way, like I do with my with my with Vient. I go, I see him as Giroud. Whereas if you look at the data, you might not get any of that at all. And you go, <laughs> No, he's this guy. And you're like, Not in my head, he's not. Like you know, I've I've imagined him as this. Like, and there's the other added element of the difference between values is relatively small. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ultimately, yeah. whether Sinan Bacchus here had 11 for dribbling or 12 from dribbling, he's probably going to put in very similar performances because it's all the other attributes in combination that makes him the player that he is. Those one or yeah. two points here or there don't matter. And so yeah. if I end up signing a player because he had slightly better dribbling but worse performance, I'm just being a bit of an idiot. <laughs> I'm still am an idiot. That. Just just to be clear, I am an idiot. I will still do that. <laughs> that was the way. That's what I was trying to think about when I mentioned before about we need to to build these teams, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, what we need to do is we need to to build the teams with what we think the players are in our heads, with with all the attributes taken off, and then when we do the the the, the stat reveal, the attribute reveal at the end, then we can be like, oh, that's not what I thought. Yeah, like, yeah. And try and go back. Or start with the attributes and then try and do the the sort of the the data approach back and forth. I think that'd be quite an interesting experiment yeah. to see if you get the same uh, if you get the same outcome or not with those. Um, one final question, I suppose. Uh, actually, no, two 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 questions. One is one is what is the biggest attribute? What is the biggest advantage of using your skin? Now, and obviously, Jeff, you've said that WTC. Uh, WTCS also has pizza charts in there as well. Now, have you got that to to view as well? So we can go, we can pop a little. Uh, I do indeed. There. So, what would be the biggest um, advantage of using your skin? And while you're doing that, would you consider yourself the Billy Bean of the FM world? Was the question that's been chucked in? <laughs> what? Well, right. I mean, that's good. That comes back. Someone's mentioned Billy Bean. That's great. So, why why should I use my skin? Um, because it keeps my organs inside um, would be the main yeah. reason there. Um, the Billy Bean question, no, absolutely not. Uh, mm. One, although I've talked about ego, I'm not that egotistical. Uh, two, <laughs> data is just a tool. It's just a way of being able to play the game slightly differently. Um, mm -hmm. Ultimately, I will yeah. use a wide variety of techniques depending on the save, depending on what I want to achieve and the narrative. Yes. Uh -huh. and thirdly, yeah. thirdly, I am not smart enough to be considered the Billy Bean. I'm, I'm quite good at pretending I know what I, I'm talking about, but I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's why I've had that. Doubt. If people ask me to do a scouting video, I'm like, yeah, you come here on Tuesday, but on Wednesday, we're scouting differently, sort of thing. But so I use data a lot with attributes. Like I don't. So the reason, because this is why I get it from like real life. I use, I sort of use at the moment, especially because I don't have access to Y Scout anymore. So I'm watching Bulgarian and whatever football. You spot a player, the data confirms sort of what I'm seeing. So I might have just had, a, I might have just seen this guy. I've seen him twice, and it might have happened that these two games. He's been fantastic. So I'm writing these things down, ah, oh, dribbling spot on and all of this stuff. And then I look at his data now and I see, oh, actually, he's, he's, his percentage with dribbling is not as high as I thought and he might not be as strong in this area. So for me, it sort of confirms what I'm seeing and what I'm looking for as well in a person, player. A hundred percent. Now in real life application, that is far more sensible as well. But it's the same <laughs> thing in FM. Yeah, it's the, it is. It's the same thing is <laughs> use them together because yeah. data can maybe make you look out for certain things that you weren't otherwise aware of. You go, oh, I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've seen him in a couple of games and he, or he's got great, great headline stats. 
this guy looks good. And Data goes, oh, he's dribbling a lot. Let's just keep an eye on what's actually happening there. Is it because he's yeah. effective at taking players on? Or you see that someone's really good at passing from their stats, but their attributes don't match. And now you've got a thing to maybe go and scout that player, watch them, just keep an eye on it, just keep in the back of your head. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. told that they're good at passing. I'm also told they're not. What's actually true? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Now, I think that's kind of where sometimes it's easy to to think, right, I've seen a player's stats. They're great. I signed them. They're going to be successful. It's, it's sadly not always going to be that way. Um, yeah. It certainly helps. If you if you've got evidence that a player is good at something, there is a good chance they will continue being good at something. Yeah, but if yeah. you don't look at it holistically, you're 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 always going to have those moments, just like when you sign a player with awesome attributes and for some reason something goes wrong. Mm, yeah, I think that's that's probably the moral of the tale there. I think Jeff, yeah. you know, you gotta just because yeah, there they go. Take take that as the takeaway then. If someone's good at something, it's because they're good at something. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so you need to be. before you obviously the, someone's questioned the advantage of using your skin over yeah. a different one, sorry. Yeah, sure. Um so I'll 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 we'll show briefly WTCS, which is a fantastic skin. Um Tom has been making skins for eight for ages and it shows there's a real real care and thought about the process and the flow yeah, of information yeah. it's broken down I, it's 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 the most popular skin for a reason um but he's very kindly approached me to ask to use the pizza charts which feels like quite a nice honor so i'm quite happy to share off other people's work if they're saying nice things about me um, <laughs> so, but this, this is an opportunity that if you like to play a, a traditional attribute type save you can still get access to that kind of analysis and still see things through the same way and break down. Now, whilst I load up back up my skin, um, the reason why you might want to use my skin or try the attributeless approach, ultimately, don't force it. You know, like I, I've said, I I tried once many years ago and I didn't try again for two years. Um, yeah, it's about yeah. a, it's about a specific play style. It's about wanting that additional that additional challenge that comes with some information being a little bit more vague. But yeah. that doesn't answer why my skin, because there's a, <laughs> there's a handful of great skins out there that do a similar thing. You've got um, Sebastian's style attribute skin. Uh, I believe Just Howie's Just Skin uh, has an attributeless mm -hmm. version as well. And you've got something like Statman, uh, which is Oof. a really, really unique way of looking at the game as well. It's crazy. <laughs> So the advantage of my skin is that beyond wanting to be attributeless or semi-attributeless, um, just to explain for those that don't know and are watching, not not just listening, um, attributes are still shown as a range with these lovely little indicators. So this small little purple dot means they're poor, or it's one to five. This slightly bigger, slightly more purple dot is uh, what the game calls average, which is six to ten. This lovely, more clearer purple spot is what the game calls good, 11 to 15. And Keenan Davis. This that orange guy dot here. No <laughs> <laughs> He's got no 15s, has he? He's not. He's not I, 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 a team meeting. You've got, you brought him up to the front. He's like, see this guy here? He's, he's good here. He's good here, but... I can, listen, you come over here, and this one he's Keenan, excellent. Keenan, get yourself Keenan. in here, lad. Show us, <laughs> show us what the fifteen looks like. <laughs> Look here. Let me bring in your replacement to show what you should be good at. <laughs> and this is why he's here. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so we've got a uh, bit big and orange in this particular color scheme is um, sixteen or above. Um, there are multiple different colour schemes. Um, there isn't a team colour specific one because text is all funny. Um, so that was that was one of the the elements as to why I created the skin. The other was that information overload I spoke about earlier. That I'd click mm -hmm. on a profile and my eyes would immediately be drawn to one thing, and I'd click away, and then I'd remember 
that I wanted to look at something else and I'd go back in and I'd forget again and I'd carry that on for 10 minutes having achieved nothing. Mm -hmm. So the other aspect is focusing on information flow. So a lot of the pages have been redesigned with the idea that you come in, you've got the headline information to start with, and then it takes you through a journey of information. Yeah. Eventually, you get familiar mm -hmm. with it. You know that if I want to look at training information, I click in, I scroll down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so this information takes away a lot of that clutter. We hide some yeah. things. So I've got some, some additional training information hidden here where I can deal with traits and I can deal with their position and duty, or I can, can speak to different, different coaches. Mm -hmm. I can do the same with the medical report. I can bring up more information. And I remember I hide, um, I, I've hidden a lot of things. Sorry. Yes, yeah, so, so I had a conversation before. I remember we had this attributeless before uh, conversation before, but this is not uh, attributeless skin. It's more so attribute masking. And I remember, yeah. I remember saying, for me, it doesn't matter either way or even not because even when I'm scouting reports, because I've now seen what a scout report can look like in real life, then seeing it in Fort Managers, that like, this is just not the way. Sort of like this is just sort like not opposite, but it's just not what it looks like. But now the funny thing is what I'm seeing here is quite literally what a scout report can look like, right? You've got the player's information at the top there. You've got your little data because obviously scouts now would involve a lot of data in there if they've got data available to them. But also the ability stuff. So like, I can't show you now, but um, in a scout report, you would say this person's strong. At this. You wouldn't have a direct number. You wouldn't, do you know what I mean? You won't have a number. You will have a good indication and you can then compare that. So like you've got very good, and you've got good, you know, like a good is between this range and that range. And that's sort of like, you would do that in real life. His level is, if you're scouting a player in Serbia, you'd be like, it's, it's not Premier League. And that, so, you know what I mean? You wouldn't rate him as a Premier League or you wouldn't recommend him to a Premier League club, but his level is good at this level sort of thing. And I think this is exactly, but also we do like profiling. I say we also scouts do like profiling players as well. Like there's not just a centre back. You've got, different types of centre-back. And uh, you haven't mentioned it, actually, but you do have that at the top, <laughs> underneath the, underneath the player's little uh, name here. You've got little level. icons. None's lit up for this guy here, but you do have player profiles in this as well, which is actually a very good way to just see. Like, like you've yeah. got hair and you've got hovers over it, fox in the box striker. And that is like, already straight away, I've got a fox in the box striker. So straight away, you already know what you should be looking at straight away just by your profile i already know what i'm looking at sort of thing but with attributes yeah. like you kind of work out that yourself right you look at his thing you're like yeah he could be a bull mm, he can be an anchor man yeah he could do this he could do that because you're just seeing so many different numbers but this game and what you've done with this kid is actually just profile that player straight away which is pretty good that was one of the things i picked up as well things like sort of like midfield destroyer or like energetic yeah. player like it's just because you haven't got those numbers to to do it he goes, yeah. well, this is what this guy's gonna do probably and and maybe it's one of those things that you know the uh, water carrier like a great great uh, description like it's maybe the one of those things that you know si maybe need to look at going at fm25 and maybe just try and like rename just this hair and, like, like give give a bit more sort of like this hair does look like a scout report them. with jazz mm. That's, it does it's just obviously with a <laughs> real life scout report it's probably like a worksheet or whatever it is but this is what it looks like but with jazz Mm, okay. Even the way you split, I, 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 ironically, oops, sorry. sorry I was about to say, even the way you split up the a technical, physical, blah, blah blah. Like we've got a thing called four corners, and it's funny that he's literally boxed them in mm. four corners. So like, so you've got here attacking, defending, possession, and physical, and that's how again, like in football, when you're doing scouting, you've got you group these things like four corners, and again, like in football managers, three, right? It's mental, physical, and technical. Yeah, but here it's more again more to what you would see in real life, which is, I guess you could say, is one reason why you should be testing the skin out. Testament to Mr. Musterman. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, well, what I should say before we... So, go on, Jeff, go on. You go. Oh, I was going to say, it's genuinely a more report-heavy style. Is In my ideal world, if I had the technical competence to do so, you wouldn't have attributes here at all. But, for example, someone like Keenan Davis, it would have... A summary, say physical strength. He shows remarkable yeah. strength because that's the thing he's elite in. It would be just words. Final third, it would probably just say is capable 
questionable decision making. Mm. But I, I, I couldn't do that. I'm not, not quite, quite, <laughs> quite smart enough to work, work that out so that it'd be conditional. And it would just be more of a report and it's about the profile of player. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, excellent. Well, I mean, I think it's one of these subjects we can talk for hours and a day. It is, yeah. I just saw that so recording think, time now. I thought, so, I oh, think what, so I think what, so I think what, what that does, so I think what that does is that leaves the door open for another conversation to mm-hmm. bring you back in and say, right, okay, with all this information that we've now taken in and, and absorbed, come back again and we'll put it into practice a little bit more and we'll start to look like, you know, how do you, how do you, do you scout for a striker? How do you scout for a midfielder? How do you scout for role specific? Cause I think that's one of those things that Aaron and I have spoken about before about what makes a certain position, a certain role. So I think maybe having this sort of approach might be quite interesting for people to, to start to look to work on going, all right, cool. How do I find a, a proper ball winning midfielder? What do I look for? Yeah. So, um, so we'll definitely do that. Um, Perfect time, of course, to, to plug your stuff, though, Mustard. And where can where can people find you? Your content, your skin, your socials, all that sort of stuff. Let us know the good things. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I should know this bit, really, shouldn't I? I am Musterman <laughs> FM in most places. Um, actually, I say most places. Twitter, YouTube. That's where you can find me. Um, you will see <laughs> Both me. Both places. Yeah. You will see me lingering around on the SI forums occasionally under a different username that I only changed actually for for like 18 years my username on the SI forms was just my name until I I, I recently remembered to change it um, <laughs> that wasn't the question you asked but just yeah just if you ever <laughs> wonder if I'm competent at things I'm not uh, but I am entertaining competency has no place around here that's Aaron's job yeah exactly like, you know? yeah yeah <laughs> so, uh, but yeah no do make sure you go and drop uh, Musterman a follow and, and check out their content and of course like I say have a look at the skin play around with it try it out uh, and let us know let us know comment below uh, what you think about you know the data driven approach is it something you've you ever tried before something that maybe you're going to think you know what I think this is the way to do it Aaron how else can people get in touch with us if they want to let us know about their uh, their data driven approach going forward you can find us on Twitter the FM show pod but you can also check out the patreon as well it won't cost you a lot as little as three pound at patreon.com forward slash the fm show pod i hate doing this bit because for some reason like i start to die out <laughs> i'm like i'm fighting it's, it's with not, myself like don't <laughs> it's not that bit it's the fact that he gets it wrong every single yeah, week I get it wrong, you can yeah. find us at, at yeah, the yeah, internet a month dot. can can can, sir, can cure my throat <laughs> just three pounds please just three pounds a month can save please. can save a football manager please. content creator yes <laughs> um yeah well, there's so much stuff so much stuff on patreon now obviously it, it, it's it's impr- it's getting bigger every single week you yeah. get a free uh, you get you get an extra episode every single week on a Monday. You get early access to the public episodes. With there's some some sort of specials and watch alongs in there as well. The live show from Nottingham's been in there. We've got some extra bits and pieces. You'll find out about loads of cool stuff before everyone else does as well. Must have been an episode is on there as well, which is fantastic. And you get access to all the back catalog the second you uh, you you subscribe. So if you can afford to support the podcast uh, through Patreon, then please do. That'd be much appreciated. Um, I think. I think that's a pretty robust episode there. So yes. there's a lot to take in. As I say, we will be back. We will bring Musterman back to talk more about this. Um, and I oh. think what's going to be really interesting is to work out just how little of this I've retained by next week. So <laughs> we come back and go, Tony, how was your, uh, how was your, um, how was your recruitment stream? Well, I signed seven players and they're all dreadful because I just looked at their attributes. <laughs> So, yeah, I um, hope you all enjoyed it. Like I say, do let us know. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and give the video a like and drop some comments on there as well if you can do. That would be much appreciated. RDF Tactics, Musterman, pleasure having you both here. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Stay safe, and we will see you all on the next one. All the best. Want to learn even more about Football Manager? Subscribe to the Patreon. Just visit patreon.com slash the FM show pod. Don't forget to rate and review and follow along on the socials at the FM Show Pod.